This is the Erasing Shame podcast. My name is DJ Chuang, and we are continuing or finishing our conversation here about spiritual formation. And I'm joined with my dear friend Jen Xuan Chen. Great to see you again, Jen. Thank you. My name's a mouthful. I appreciate you saying it. <laughs> it's only three syllables, so it's not too bad, actually. <laughs> you know, it's one of those Chinese names that has like two syllables, which is not very common. So. Hmm. And then there are a few that have two syllable last names. Yes. And then, um, well, we could go on many tangents about we Chinese could. culture, of which there are 5,000 <laughs> plus years. Here we are as Asian Americans with 200 some years of history, but a very intense 200 years, shall we say. Mm -hmm. And yes. uh, on this episode, well, I wanted to just check in with you, see how the experience has been as you're um, dipping your toes in the water of podcasting and sharing about the experiences you've had as a spiritual director for uh, many years mm -hmm. with a general audience here. Yeah, thanks, DJ. I'm so glad to be here. I was thinking about this afternoon and what we talk about and just what I've learned as I've been in this space talking with you. It feels very comfortable. It feels like we're both mm. just exploring God in our stories and how he has been with us in ways in which we're experiencing him and growing in our relationship with him. So it's been a really fun space. Thanks. Thank you. And it's so refreshing to have God be with us rather than uh, some of the past experiences I've had with God where it was just knowing the right doctrines and uh, beliefs and trying to behave the right ways and avoid the wrong things. And on one level, that's where many people start. Mm -hmm. But until God becomes with us and guides us and is present with us through the hard times and the ups and downs. We don't have that elusive thing mm -hmm. that some may still be part of, of what is this relationship with God thing mm -hmm. when it seems like just religion and rituals mm -hmm. and beliefs. And so it, it's a neat place to be for those of us that are here. But we mm -hmm. also know many people are not here. Yeah, it is a journey, DJ. So how, how did you get here personally? I want to explore a bit of your story. Mm. You know, I think growing up as a Chinese American in our community, I grew up in a pretty white neighborhood and a white church. Um, and I didn't have an Asian friend until I was 18. So cue the... Surprise. It's, um, so there was a lot I was super unaware of. I mean, needless to say, I got to university and I was pretty clueless in terms of my own, the parts of my story that I was very aware of, but had maybe hidden. So you don't tell people we actually drive three hours to go have lunch with my grandparents. And then we get back in the car and we turn around and come home because you have to do that. You have to have them some with your grandparents at least once a month and <clears throat> excuse me and i think i was always trying to sort sort the part of my story the part of my life that i could share with a with my white friends mm -hmm. and then the part of my story that included my chinese name and the fact that there were all these kind of values that our family held that i really valued but i didn't know how to share with my friends um mm -hmm. so Growing up, not having one Asian friend until you're 18, that really shapes you. And these friends are were very dear to me, and I learned a lot from them and their families. But I also knew, boy, our families are really different. We take off our shoes at the front door and, you know, all mm -hmm. that basic stuff that we, we can talk all day on. But those were, you know, just needless to say, really awkward moments. So I think as I got into university and just began to take classes on Asian American studies and met other Asians and maybe got called like a white Asian, which I was like, I don't think that's very mm -hmm. nice. I don't really know what that means. Mm -hmm. um, and I think my just 
taking that then to God, like, what do I do with that? And did you make a mistake in giving me the story that I have? Knowing, I don't think he did, but my life is so weird and dysfunctional and messy and dysfunctional in the fact that I don't know how to, how to reconcile the different worlds that I live in. Um, church and school and family. And um, then our, you know, that first, my grandparents' generation and how do we relate there? And so I went to, I went overseas to Asia right after university. And I got, I went to China to teach English for a year. And boy, I was really unprepared. You know, that, that scene in Crazy Rich Asians where they, she says to her mom, like, well, they're Chinese and I'm Chinese. So what's the problem? And the mom gives her that look. And like, when I saw that movie, like tears came to my eyes. It was like a a visceral response. Like I was that, I was her. That what's the big deal? We're Chinese, they're Chinese. And being super, just unaware that we're not all the same Chinese. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So I think in China, I learned a lot. And I feel like, I was received by friends there that um, Chinese friends who just, who found a place for me with my kind of terrible language. My Chinese language wasn't really up to par Mandarin. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a Cantonese speaking family. So Mm -hmm. I'm a great eavesdropper. Can't always produce the language as fast as I want to, but um, just all of that inside just stirring around. And, and then I ended up, moving cross-culturally um with my family so my husband and we raised our four kids over in asia for about 24 25 mm-hmm. years wow and in that space i found oh god i really mm-hmm. did i grew to appreciate the story of my grandmother walking two weeks with my mm-hmm. grand with my father in her sling in the front um, hiding by day walking by night um wow and getting to Hong Kong. And Mm -hmm. my grandfather was in Thailand, I think, learning a business. And she was a young mom fleeing China and now living living in China as an adult and feeling that, wow, it was just a generation before my Mm -hmm. my, even though my father had hardly spent any time in China. Um, Like a story that had felt so far away, like it was almost like kind of a fairy tale, like some other person's story. And then here I am in this country trying to reconcile and then raising my own kids there. And um, I think learning to to see and value and just kind of hold the fact that I'd grown up kind of in between and getting more comfortable with myself. Mm-hmm. And learning to, in some ways, if it doesn't sound too weird, just like myself, to like my story. Mm-hmm. And I think it takes us time. I think when your story is different, maybe when you're the only one in your community or in your school that is a certain way. I think you now kids, you know, they pull out sushi for lunch and they use chopsticks with ease. And I think, well, that was just not a thing <laughs> when we were growing up, which I love. People like the food, but I think in terms of us, learning to appreciate the culture and the stories. So I began asking, we, and years ago, we sat with my grandmother and just interviewed her before she passed. And it's so many stories, so many mm-hmm. stories. And we just, we taped all of those stories and we're working oh, through right. just um, writing those down. And I have a grandmother who is in a home now and she's a hundred and I'm probably not listening enough for me to ask any questions, but I, when I get to see her, there's something about being in her presence that speaks such great strength to me, even though our stories are so different. Um, yeah, I've come to find that God is in it all. And mm-hmm. DJ, your story and mine and everyone listening, there was no mistake. Um, mm-hmm. I love Psalm 139. It just speaks of being searched and known, being in- intricately formed, our, our, our being, our soul, that everything about us is known by God. And what a comfort that is. I think in times mm-hmm. in, a, in a world where all of us are longing to be seen and known and loved, 
So that's a a long answer to your question, but I think I'm still on that journey of discovery. Yes. Well, thank you for sharing that. And in sharing our story, we find one another in each other's stories. Mm -hmm. And that's how it helps us to connect. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes um, uh, in, in making sense of my story, I find so few people understand where I'm coming from. Yeah. And that sound that feels so isolating. And for many years of my life, that's turned into self hatred and self loathing. Right. And why, why God did you make me this way? Mm-hmm. But it took some years to gain perspective that, okay, I've been looking at my life a certain way, but mm-hmm. there's a different way of looking at it with mm-hmm. God's help and with stories of others and with mm-hmm. therapy and other tools and things yeah. that have helped me to reframe or see see differently and kind of gain, mm-hmm. gain that spiritual perspective also the awakening yeah that even though some of the things i have unique those are uniquely different but they're uniquely valuable yes and and i can hold my story not in a narcissistic way but that's as a gift for others and invite others to appreciate their own story too. Absolutely. There's no one like okay. you, DJ. <laughs> well, thanks there for the no confirmation. Like <laughs> <laughs> that used to sting yeah. a lot more, but now um, mm. in my latter half, I'm appreciating it and valuing it and using it as a gift. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. So thank you. So, um, as we connected, you're starting to work on a book. So tell us about uh, how that got started, because writing a book is really hard work. And so that's <laughs> why most people don't do it. Oh, it is hard, DJ. And I think um, there's many times where I just think, you know, I'll just go to Office Depot and just print it out and staple it and give it to my kids. That's pretty much mm-hmm. where I'm, I feel most of the time. But I, I do feel a call to write and to offer it. Um, I think I've, I've read so much. And I think you said that, you know, we look for our, we look for language to explain our stories. Mm -hmm. But if a lot of what we're reading is of a certain, a certain perspective, maybe in a certain culture where I'm looking for, where's the family, you know, like, not just like your immediate family, but like extended family, where's that craziness? Mm -hmm. You know, how do I make sense of you know, um, yeah, the large family dynamic and how important that is to us. And as I started to think about writing, um, part of it was just like, I just want an honest, I want to write an honest story. Mm. Um, and in a way, not in a memoir form or in any type of like, yeah, this is my life, but just in a way to use it as a, as a springboard for people to look at their own stories. So it really is just about like how God uses our stories, how God is in our stories. um, And how do we integrate our story and biblical truth? Like the truth that we know, Mm -hmm. but even that, that coming to know as we're, as we keep on growing. So I, that, um, yeah. How do we explore the ways in which God has, has been with us in our, in our culture, I mean, the gifts that he's given us in um, even our family arrangements, the, the families that mm. we were born into. And how do we make sense of sometimes a lot of the pain that, that we encounter? And so I use that, you know, we, we talked about the paradigm of shaping and undoing and um, awakening and the remaking. And that's mm. kind of the four four big sections of the book and Mm -hmm. in each section just really just talks about a little bit of my story, but also just looking, diving into just um, scripture and what it says about those truths in our lives. But I also, I want it to be, I want us to be able to, even in the hard, like I think being able to find God's humor (laughs) and just the, the parts that feel kind of like, what do I do with that? And, um, 
And what, what about memories? I, I work a lot with people in whether it's working with them in spiritual direction or in mentoring or coaching. And when I ask people like, would you tell me a story, a formative story of when you were young? Um, most people will tell me, I don't remember much. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting. And I don't think we need to remember everything. I don't think. But when we then ask God and we say, can I, and I just say, can, can we just take a minute and just invite God into that? And let's ask him if he has a story for you to remember. Hmm. And it's, you know, it's often said, like, pay attention to what you're paying attention to. And mm -hmm. also what we remember is also key. Like they tell, okay. you know, what we remember is also something that tells us about ourselves. And I think when we remember, oh, that, oh yeah, the yellow formica table that was in our dining room that we sat around and mm. we sit in that and we remember the furniture or we remember, you know, what if, you know, when you go into a certain restaurant or we hear music, it triggers a memory. And I think exploring that with God is an entirely different thing than just like trying to remember our stories mm -hmm. on our own. But where we can, even if it was before a time that we knew him. Um, yeah. So I, I love just walking with people and helping them find God in it and what feels ordinary, what feels maybe kind of insignificant, but it's not insignificant there's nothing mm. about our life that's insignificant mm. and um you're i'm intrigued so what's the title of the book well let's see if if um or working I get, title i get to I keep say. it <laughs> it's called dim sum on sundays and it's where i'm just in the in the stage of waiting right now it's out for publishers and my agent is just waiting so it is a mm -hmm. Total offering to God. I feel very that is just very satisfied in the sense of God. I've didn't I've done this and I offer it. And I, a friend of mine who's a creative, she says, you know, most people just create things and they don't think about like, should I do this? You know, am I good enough for this? She's like, when Christians, Christian creatives want to make something, make it, write it, write the song, paint the painting, um, do it and offer it. Um, so that's what it, that's what I'm doing. Good. Yeah. So we'll be waiting with you and cheering you on. Thank that you. That it gets to the right publisher and the, into the right hands. Yeah. Because it sounds like a fascinating journey that you're inviting people to take uh, with God and with yeah. you and some other characters in the book. So it was intriguing for me to hear you say that even in the ordinary things of life that God can bring mm -hmm. it back to memory mm -hmm. and God's doing something. Mm -hmm. Do you have an example of that you can share? I was actually going to ask you, DJ, do you have ah, a story? Very good. Okay. So we'll <laughs> each share about a moment in our past. Um, so I'm asking God to bring mm -hmm. one of those memories. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do this real time. And yeah. God can work in real time. That's right. One of the things that I was in my recovery six years ago, I learned this little thing called conversation with God. Mm. And sometimes we talk about prayer being like conversation with God. Mm -hmm. And I kind of made that literal. So as I'm com having conversation with you, God is listening in and we're That's right. talking with him. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of on a hypermania mode. And I thought, oh, maybe that could be a book idea. But when I'm in hypomania mode, um, I have to check myself if it was just mm -hmm. a wild idea I couldn't sustain or if it was actually something there. And so I blogged it every day for 30 days and then mm. the idea kind of went away. So I said, okay, maybe it wasn't a best selling book. <laughs> <laughs> but you went for it. That's so good. <laughs> but I wanted to confirm. And, and so I was like, mm -hmm. oh, Romans 12, 2, that we can test and see what the will of God is. Mm. And so that that's that converged in the process of that but i still make it a practice to talk out loud as i 
have conversation with people and conversation mm-hmm. with God. And so that um, that's something I do regularly. I'm not having a family memory come to mind right now. Um, we did have a lot of sitting around the dinner table. Mm-hmm. And my dad would lecture. So my da- dad is a domineering person. Mm personality and we found out just how domineering he was when he passed away Mm -hmm. 10 years ago and then our whole family dynamic changed Mm -hmm. because he was absent from the family system Mm -hmm. and then we we all began to experience a new freedom and autonomy that we didn't realize we had Mm -hmm. all those hundreds i don't know thousands of meals around the family table it was sitting quietly Mm. half listening to the lectures not really remembering it and now i'm looking back at that 10 year old 12 year old 14 year old Mm -hmm. dj it's like what was that all about I don't have an answer to it, mm. but that's what that's where my mind went as we mm-hmm. talked out loud. It's like, yeah, God, where do you want to bring me and take a look and see, God, what were you doing in those moments? Mm. I don't have the answer at the moment, but maybe He'll bring that to mind. Yeah. But He was doing something. Yeah. So the truth is, He was doing something, even when we don't see it, even when we don't feel it. God is yeah. still working. Yeah. How'd you feel as a 10 year old sitting at the table? Well, looking back, I would say stifle, Mm -hmm. but in my teens and twenties and even into my thirties, I was just totally out of touch with my feelings. Mm -hmm. So the only Mm -hmm. feelings I had was happy and sad. Mm Mm-hmm. Mostly sad, actually, because Mm. that was my default feeling. Mm. And then I didn't know how to articulate or process anymore beyond that. And so the focus of my life was just to go to school, get good grades, rinse and repeat (laughs) until Mm. I got to college. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did anybody else know that you were sad? Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. I have photographic evidence of my sadness. So mm. my family photos, <clears throat> or we'd be sitting mm. duckies, I would have a mm. noticeable frown, mm. a hardwired frown. I couldn't change it, or I didn't know how to change it. Mm-hmm. My parents would scold me sometimes, but mm-hmm. I was feeling sad, and I didn't want to hide it. Yeah. But you didn't know what to do with it. Yeah, and I didn't know what to do with it. Hmm. That's a lot to carry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that, DJ. Sure. Yeah. I think when you said the thousands of hours sitting at the table, I think a lot of us... I've spent thousands of hours doing something, especially in those early childhood years. And unpursued, we can just, there's a part of us that kind of dies. Mm. And we don't know what to do. Mm. Because obviously you have a voice. And somehow you found it. And I'd be mm-hmm. curious, if we had longer to ask you when you discovered you had a voice. You had something to bring. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's been part of this podcast. So Mm. people can scour through the past 125 episodes and pick up some of the vignettes. Yeah. Um, Yeah, it's been an incredible journey in the past 20 some years. Mm. So good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looking back, you know, I think we tell ourselves a story. Most people will tell me, well, but I was fine. I turned out, right? We're good. But there's stuff that we, I think, 
we stuff long enough, it just comes out somewhere. Mm -hmm. Right. That grief Mm -hmm. and that sorrow, that pain, that isolation, that being ignored, that being unseen, it comes out. We don't actually just stuff it. And someone told me I duct tape it and put it in the caverns of my soul. And I thought, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) eventually it's going to find its way out. So, but that's okay. You know, God is like we said, yes, you know, as we, we've talked, God is patient with us and he's kind. And I think in community, as we, these places here on Erasing Shame and hopefully Mm -hmm. in our church communities and our within friends, we can create those spaces where we can listen to each other, tell our stories. What if five friends got together and weekly, everyone just brought a story Mm. and we listened. We didn't, we didn't admonish. We didn't advise. We didn't make it better. We let it be. We mirrored back what we heard. So someone said it was really hard. And we say it was really hard. Mm. There was something so powerful when someone can hear and hold a story mm-hmm. because we all have them. Yes. So I encourage anybody listening, do yes. that with your friends. Find yes. a small group and begin that. And it doesn't even have to be in person. I think. I've done lots of these groups over Zoom, lots of story listening with adults, grown, grown adults who want to share, want to explore, want to know that, God, were you with me? Mm -hmm. I need to know. I need to Mm -hmm. know that you were there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had a story come to mind um, about it a couple years ago during COVID. We were back in the States for a year. We were planning to go back to Thailand at the time. And then COVID hit and it just, we just realized we had that sense that we were supposed to stay in the States, but then COVID just kind of confirmed that we Mm -hmm. were to remain um, with, um, yeah, most of our kids in the States married and going to university. It felt like, yeah, it's a good time to come back. So I, we had invited some friends of ours were living in our in our home in Thailand and I knew that I would need to ask them to help me pack up our house and Mm. that Chinese part of me that doesn't want to trouble anybody I was Mm -hmm. struggling I was struggling over the fact that I wanted my stuff but I struggled with the fact that I wanted my stuff right so I shouldn't have to I don't I shouldn't care about stuff it doesn't matter I've been 25 years overseas not a big deal but I was really I was hitting a a wall. I was in that, Mm -hmm. it was undoing for me. Mm -hmm. I was weepy. I was frustrated at myself for being weepy. Like I was just this, what's going on? So one night I I was actually quite scared, the emotions I was feeling. Mm -hmm. And um, my husband said, Hey, he was just really, it was like midnight one night, couldn't sleep. And I got up and I just told my husband, I said, I don't know what to do with how all I'm feeling. And he said, can you remember a time when you felt some of this same emotion? Mm -hmm. And he did this for me. Mm -hmm. And he said, God, would you bring to mind a story for Jen? Would you help her find language for what she's feeling right now? But it's triggered, triggering something deeper, right? Mm -hmm. My, um, I don't want to trouble anybody. I don't Mm want to. Um, make anybody sad because I knew our leaving Thailand would also make people sad, our community and the friends that we had there. And I've worked hard to not make people sad and to bear people's, you know, to help. And anyways, we sat in that space. I'm crying and my husband's holding my hand and then a story comes and I'm two years old. Mm. And I walk, I'm walking into my mom's room and I don't, re- I've never had this happen before. So it was really like a moment. I'm walking into my mom's room and she's in bed. The drapes are drawn and she's been crying. What I didn't know is that she had just miscarried, um, lost oh. a baby at, at 16 weeks. Mm. And, uh, but I'm two, so I don't understand anything. But in mm. that moment, I see her face and it's dark in the room. And I think I try and go and pull the drapes open but I tell myself in that moment I need to make sure that I 
make mom happy and mm. I'm, that I make people happy and that I don't mm. bring sadness because every, but she, cause mom is sad. I don't, I don't want to cause any trouble. Mm-hmm. And it's so you can, people can kind of test me on this, but I'm two. I didn't know I was two. I, I'm, I see myself as a little girl. So the next day I was at my mom and I said, mom, I had this memory of me walking into your room. I know where the bed is and I know where the, the windows are. We didn't stay in that house for very long. So I actually don't have a real physical proof of the house. Mm-hmm. But um, my mom said, you were two. And she starts crying. And it's in this moment, like God just entered in. Like he, he healed that part of me in that moment with mm-hmm. mom, in that moment with John. Mm-hmm. Began to say, Jen, it's not your job to bring happiness to everyone. You can't protect mm-hmm. people from mm-hmm. their sorrow, but you can be with them in their sorrow as I am with you in yours. And as I grieved our leaving Thailand and I grieved and I asked our friends, would you pack up our place and received their love and their care for us? Um, but it was such an interesting, like, it could have been like, not a big deal. It's okay, Jen, just let your our friends pack up the house and get to bed. Mm-hmm. But it took my husband, a friend to sit with me and to say, God, would you, would you show Jen? Is there a memory? And I think that things are, grief triggers grief, right? And, yes. and I think there's, our stories are all linked somehow together. Mm-hmm. But I think finding language that evening helped me somehow brought closure um, we couldn't go back to say goodbye because it was COVID. It was two years before we could get back to Thailand to say goodbye to friends and many had already left. But I was okay. Like I think the sorrow I had felt allowed myself to feel was part of my like, um, I had resisted mm-hmm. the sorrow for a long time. I'm mm-hmm. I'm like in that movie Inside Out where Joy is trying to draw a circle for sadness to stay in. And she says, now you just stay right in there. <laughs> Don't move. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's kind of how I've, you know, let's just keep sadness at bay. And I can, you know, let me, let me, let me help us all. <laughs> I'll put on a happy face. But, you know, God is, the grief journey is real. And the emotions, the deep emotions that, we carry are real and they're good. They're good. And God is not put off by that. And we can invite him in. Yes. To those moments. Wow. What what a trip down memory lane. And God took you there as Mm -hmm. part of the healing process. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Thanks for listening. I hope that touches lives of those that listen to that they mm-hmm. won't be afraid to go back in time. Yeah. Because God can go back there with them. Yeah, that's right. And bring healing. Because mm-hmm. that's what we need. That's right. I mean, we need God every step of the way. But it's those past memories that need a lot of healing so we get out of the shadows of those. Mm-hmm. Things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's been a wonderful yeah. conversation with you, Jen. And I look forward to seeing you in person soon. Yes. So grateful we have an opportunity to do that. Yeah. And yeah. We'll see you very soon. I invite our viewers and listeners to add feedback, add a comment, voice message. We're on social media. Everything's linked in at erasingshame.com. And there's a link in the show notes. You can also reach out directly to Jen Shou and Chen. She would love to hear from you. And as soon as her book is released, we'll announce it here too. So you can celebrate and join her on the journey of life and growing with God. Thank you again, Jan. Blessings to you. Thank you. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Erasing Shame podcast. Check out the show notes at erasingshame.com and subscribe to our email for updates. We would love to hear from you, so please add your comments at our website or on social. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any podcast app. And you can also subscribe on YouTube or follow on Facebook. Please 
add a rating and review so we can reach more people with our message of health, hope, and compassion. This podcast is the digital outreach of Christian Asian Mental Health.